Hey guys, I want to do a quick follow up to that hydroponic fertilizer video and uh, touch on some of the things that were mentioned in the comments section and make a few suggestions and also uh, clarify exactly what I was trying to achieve right here. My goal here is to save people money. From the PMs and emails that I'm getting, there's people all over the world who are really interested in hydroponics and would greatly benefit from something like this if they could get the confidence and feel pretty sure that what they were going to put together was going to work. Money is tight right now. It doesn't matter what country you're in. Money is tight and people just cannot afford to take $20 and go buy some fertilizer and then have it not work. They need to know before they buy it what they can expect, what kind of results they're going to get. The method that I chose to do was the Kratky method. I call it Kratky because that was the guy who did the studies in Hawaii uh, who put this thing together. I think there were some other things done in, in uh, South Asia somewhere prior to him, but he was the one who put the stuff online and got his writings and everything and actually patented the process. I will put a link down below this video again to some of his writings if you are not familiar with him. His last name is spelled K-R-A-T-K-Y, Kratky. What he said was you could grow vegetables in a static solution like this without having air pumps. You don't need those air stones in there. You don't need to recirculate the water. You can do this 100% off grid. Very beneficial, especially in those poor countries where they don't have a whole lot of water. They don't have electricity. If they could just get a little bit of fertilizer, they could grow some food. But why do you not hear about this? If you go down to the bottom of most of his writings, you will see something that says patented. He patented this process. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but from my experience, when you have something patented, that means nobody else is going to be able to make money off of it. You look at the other methods of hydroponics, the deep water culture, the NFT, even the Dutch buckets. You got companies selling the Beto buckets, selling the whole kits, the systems. There's a lot of different hydroponic systems out there for sale. You don't, there is no system with this right here. You got a reservoir, you put some water and fertilizer in it, put your plants on top. That's it. And I believe since there's not a good way to make money on this, nobody's talking about it. Now, in regard to the fertilizer, I'm trying to do water soluble fertilizer. That means in all likelihood, it is not gonna be organic. I have not found an organic water soluble fertilizer yet. There are some components to it, but you'd have to do a lot of mixing and formulations and things to try to figure out what the actual NPK would be. So you buy a commercial water soluble fertilizer that has an NPK on the bag or box and go by their mix instructions and make the thing work. If you would like to do this and do it organically, there are plenty of liquid organic fertilizers, but I tell you, they are not cheap. I have looked at the bottles. I have a couple of them that I want to try out and looking at the mixed ingredients, I'm not going very far with a quart of them. Not very far at all. It's going to cost an arm and a leg, especially if I try to grow tomatoes with them. So I'm going to stick with the water soluble fertilizers. Now, why did I choose the miracle Grow and the Triple 20? Those were the ones that people kept asking, hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Will it work? Can you try it? Can you do a video on this? What do you think might happen? So I put the thing together. This is the test. You see what the results are. Right now, the Master Blend is far and away the better choice. In regard to the Triple 20, the Jack's uh, professional stuff, they do make a hydroponic uh, line of fertilizers. Uh, JRPeters.com, I think is what it is. Somebody uh, told me about that. Look it up. They make some uh, fertilizers comparable to the Master Blend. Several very, uh, very similar combinations. If you can get your hands on some of that stuff, maybe it's closer to you where you can save on the shipping costs, take a look at it. I want to say thank you to the people who posted all of those comments, uh, given your information and telling me what you knew and sharing, you know, sharing your experience with everybody else who come along and watch that video and read their comments. There are a lot of things I learned that I had not uh, thought about, did not realize. I did not realize the differences in the nitrogen compounds. The Master Blend has the uh, nitrate version. You mix it with calcium nitrate. The Miracle Grow products, both of them have urea nitrogen. What I'm finding out is the urea is better suited for growing in the soil. In regard to the pH of this stuff, 
my water is 7.0 i've tested it a few times several times and it always comes out right at seven when i start at seven and i mix my fertilizer in the ph goes down into the sixes i'm comfortable with that so i don't have to worry about it if you have 7.5 8 somewhere in there you need to get you some ph down or some uh, just the phosphoric acid lemon juice maybe something some kind of acid to drop that ph down to a range where it's not way up on the uh, base side I did come out here and test all four of these boxes. These were the results. The master blend had a pH of 7.3, kind of high, but I have seen in the past that as the nutrients were used up, the pH comes up. The miracle Grow, the base formula was 6.9. The tomato formula, surprisingly, was 5.7. That's getting on down there. And the Jack's Triple 20 was 5.8. Somebody else made a comment about thinking the Jack's would be down into the fives. They were exactly right. I'm going to do some more tests like this, maybe not in a full box like this because I don't need 12 plants to find out if a, a solution is going to work. I just bought some smaller totes, I just mix it up in those and try the different formulas and see what's what. I'm not a wealthy man, not money wise anyway, got a wealth of other things but just, just not, the, uh, not the Benjamin so to speak. But I can afford to take $15 or $20 and buy some fertilizer and do these tests and see how they come out because I'd rather spend the $20 and lose it so to speak than have you know a few hundred or a few thousand other people go out there and spend their hard-earned money all of them me knowing that it's not going to work or finding out after they've already spent their money that hey that was a bad idea I don't want people losing money like that it's just too hard this time this day and time to get the money to start with so you need to be smart with it I want people to be successful. I want you to enjoy the growing. There, like I said earlier, there's a ton of people interested in hydroponics right now. A lot of folks don't have gardens outside. They don't have room for you know, raised beds. They've only got a balcony, they got a, a patio or back deck or something like that. And if they can make a little small setup like this, what can it lead to? My first uh, hydroponic stuff was a little uh, a three bucket Dutch bucket system. That turned out okay, and I went to the rail system. That did pretty good. Then I went to this cracky and the float and raft stuff. And just, it's a natural progression. When you get into it, you will find out that it is extremely enjoyable. And the more you do, the more you're gonna wanna do, and the more you're gonna wanna learn about it. And then you will get into the buying the pH meters, the TDS, the air pumps, and all that kind of stuff. But you gotta have the success first. At least that's the way I see it. If you have that early success, and you get something productive out of it, you build the confidence up, and then you don't mind going into investing a little bit in it. But right now, just starting out, I am trying to find ways to make it nice and simple, almost foolproof, for anybody to be able to set something up, uh, just set it and forget it, walk away, come back in 30 days, and start eating. I might have rambled on a little bit here, but this is really important to me judging by the number of emails and pms that i get so many people uh just so excited about it and really looking forward to it and this is the way that they see that they can actually grow their own food look at the people in the countries who don't have a whole lot of water i get asked about the water waste how much water is wasted right now if you look in this container right here it has this lettuce right here has probably used about an inch and a half of water in this reservoir. That's it. When this is done, I can take this off, take these 12 out of here, put 12 more back in it, and I'll mix up some fresh solution and just top it off. There won't be any wasted right there. In your Dutch bucket reservoirs, wait till that thing is run all the way down real low about the time you get ready to change it out. Dilute that water, pour it around some shrubs or something like that outside or some other plants in your garden. You ain't gonna hurt it diluted as much as it is and you don't waste uh, hardly any water at all. It's not like in this greenhouse right here where the ground is so dry and I come in here just about every day and water it and it just go, it's gone, it's gone. It takes a lot of water to grow in ground. Does not take much water to grow in a hydroponic situation like this in terms of uh, actual benefit and how much is wasted. It's a very efficient way to grow. I'm going to let this go on for another few weeks and see how things go. But right now, being as how I can see how fast the master blend grew and how slow the other ones were and understanding the fact that those fertilizers were actually meant for growing in the soil, I want to make a recommendation. If you have no intention of growing tomatoes, 
uh, and you don't want to get involved with mixing the calcium nitrate and stuff like I do in the 4 1838 the Hydro Gardens um, the master blend they do have a product a 10 8 22 I think is what it is 10 8 22 is their hobby formula you can use that that was one of the formulations that mr. Cracky used in his stuff for growing lettuce the only thing you have to add to that is Epsom salt you can find that at the grocery store the drugstore anywhere should be very easy to mix up so again my recommendation or check with uh, the J.R. Peters the Jack stuff get you a hydroponic fertilizer you'll get much better results the money will stay the same as far as the cost goes and if you want to be uh, organic with it feel free to go buy those liquids and things and you know have at it uh, I think it's going to be a whole lot more expensive and if anybody happens to find a complete or a water soluble organic fertilizer that I can mix up some kind of combination and get the proper NPKs that you would like for me to try let me know where it's at I'll go get it and we'll try to get this thing done so hope that was helpful y'all take care and Lord willing I'll see you next time if you found this video to be helpful informative entertaining or just downright funny don't forget to subscribe